That's an area with us. South Africa Central Bank has made a significant move by cutting its main interest rate for the first time in over four years. The South African Reserve Bank, SARB, Saab, lowered the repo rate by 25 basis points to 8%, signaling a shift towards easing monetary policy. This decision was likely influenced by the country's declining inflation rate, which came in at 4.4% in August, just below the 4.5% midpoint of the central bank's target range. The rate cut is also seen as a response to the U.S. Federal Reserve's recent decision to lower rates and position South Africa as the latest emerging market to embark on an easing cycle. From South Africa, I'm joined by Professor Waldo Krugel, economist, Northwest University. Thank you, Professor, for joining me today. Good morning and thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely. So what do you make of South Africa's 25 basis point rate cut? I mean, my guess is that you expected a cut. So tell me, was it more than you expected or less? Or did you expect a hold? I think uh, everyone expected a cut and a small cut, the 25 basis points. Uh, the market's also pricing in, in a 25 basis point. So in line with expectations, uh, but a 50 would have been nice. Uh, the Fed have, have opened the way for a 50 with, with their decision on Wednesday. So, uh, but unfortunately, our, our bank has been rather cautious, uh, and, and the end result was the 25. I'm not sure I heard you quite well, but do you see this as a bandwagon effect or what some would call the head mentality in any way, seeing that the United States also caught it? Because, I mean, we've seen a lot of uh, people saying, oh, okay, this is because the United States has started, so it's just joining. And do you also think it's that bandwagon effect? I think uh, in our case, it's not only bandwagon. Uh, it makes sense to, to follow the U.S. these decisions uh, because they're such a major player. But our domestic uh, economic situation warranted that, that anyway. Policy was quite restrictive uh, before this decision. Uh, inflation has been coming down. Inflation expectations have been coming down. So uh, that was necessary at, uh, just for the sake of the economy and consumers particularly. So um, not a bandwagon, uh, but I think sensible following the lead of the U.S. Right. Well, Saab believes inflation has fallen more than expected, yet believes there are still risks to the outlook. Let me get your thoughts on this. Uh, what are these risks, really? Uh, the risks are, are, are very broad. Uh, so it's basically a risk of uh, the Rand dollar exchange rate uh, depreciating again. Uh, the causes of that could be something like uh, global uh, geopolitical tension, uh, specifically in the Middle East. I think that's, that's the one international one that they're worried about. Uh, and they also worry about local electricity tariffs. Uh, ESOM has applied for a very significantly large uh, tariff increase uh, for next year. And if that gets added on, uh, it, it would put some pressure on inflation. So between those two, they, they are slightly worried still. To us, what would you say are the key drivers you know, for South Africa's tapering price levels? I think it's really been the strength of the RAND compared to where it was in the second quarter of this year. So the, the exchange rate has appreciated significantly, and coupled with the much lower oil price, uh, we've been uh, getting these fuel price reductions, which have, which have helped a lot. So that, that brings down CPI in its own right as an item in the basket. Uh, but added on to that, uh, it, it also just filters through the economy as transport costs decrease. Uh, internationally, I think global commodity prices for uh, food commodities have also decreased quite a bit, and that has helped our food price situation as well. Uh, this, the, the absence of load shedding now uh, has also reduced the cost of doing business. So a lot of things moving in the right direction. Absolutely. So based on that, do you see the SARB achieving its goal of re-anchoring inflation expectations around the middle of its target range for longer till about 2026? Do you see that happening? Yes, uh, definitely. I think that, that it's already uh, slightly lower than they expect. And keeping it there is not going to be difficult if, if they are conservative as they are at the moment with the right cuts. Uh, and they, the, the, the demand side of the economy has been really flat. Consumers have been struggling, investments low, uh, the government spending is, is in a, a process of fiscal consolidation. So there's not a lot of new demand side pressure that's going to, to increase inflation anytime soon. And uh, I, I think they, they should be happy to, to, to get to the, the 4.5 midpoint and keep it there. 
Right, so talk to us about how effective this 25 business point rate cut will be in stimulating economic growth. I knew earlier you were talking about how this is good for consumer wallets and all that. So talk to us, I mean, beyond consumer wallets, let's, let's look at what it also means for businesses and even growing the economy. It's still a small cut, so I, I don't expect too much happening uh, uh, from the 25 basis point, uh, but it's the start of a cutting cycle. The, the idea is to be... Uh, at a, a whole 100 basis points lower uh, by the middle of next year. So, so I think uh, in that sense, there's more good news to come. And added on top of that is the lower fuel prices. Uh, there's a little bit of extra spending from the pension reforms of the two-part system. Uh, and once that extra spending kicks off and it benefits retail, that slowly spills over into uh, other kinds of economic activity. There's a fair bit of optimism about the, the government of national unity and the pace of reforms and everything added together. I think we can see the economy picking up a bit more speed and, and the Reserve Bank has reflected this uh, in a slightly higher economic growth forecast. Uh, so on its own, the 25 is low, uh, but cumulatively with everything else, uh, we're, we're hoping to see a difference soon. You know, earlier I heard you talk about how that between now and the uh, middle of next year, you're expecting about 100 basis points. That's like 1%, bringing it to 7%. Do you think that's good enough? And then another thing I'd like you to talk about is, are you expecting a rate cut in November? Sounds more like it. I bet you're probably expecting for the five basis points, because if you're talking about 100 between now and the middle of next month, that, of course, is what we're saying. So t talk to us about this. 7% by middle of next year. Do you think that would be good enough? I think, uh, to my mind, it's still on the slightly high side. Uh, we, we should be going for 6.5, um, but uh, that, that's one guy's view. Uh, what, I, what I do think, though, is, and the Reserve Bank uh, has this in mind, is that you can't drive economic growth from the demand side only. So they are going to uh, loosen up policy. Uh, but uh, what we really need is, is for investment to kick in and those reforms to start bearing fruit. And that could sustainably drive economic growth. Uh, so it's a little bit of help for consumers, but the real growth, the 3% and above, that has to come from other places than just spending. Right, so talk to us. How does South Africa's business cycle compare to other emerging markets, you know, particularly those in Latin America and Central Europe? And do you think there are lessons that can be drawn from their experiences? I think uh, the lessons that, that the bank has been drawing is, is to be uh, cautious. Uh, in, in the latest cutting cycle, it, it's mainly been advanced economies with a, a couple of other developing economies uh, cutting slowly, uh, but, but we are even more conservative. So I think we see that in the 25 basis point. And, and from a reputation point of view, I think the worst thing the MPC thinks can happen if, is that they have to go back and say, well, we were wrong, inflation is going up again, and we need to put up rates again. They'd rather try and avoid that situation by, by cutting very conservatively and slowly at the start and, and seeing uh, how the inflation dynamics play out into next year. Uh, and, and I think that the experience of a, of a Brazil, for example, would, would urge the support. Right, thank you so much, Professor Waldo Krugel, economist, Northwest University, for your time and your thoughts on the show today. Pleasure.